Hi everyone, Sammy here. Welcome back to another video. And today I have something special to share with you, with the world. For the first time we have a monochrome sensor in a camera that is not a Leica. <laughs> this is a K3 Mark III monochrome. Uh, there is a regular Pentax K3 Mark III uh, DSLR out there. This is just a monochrome version. And if I understand it correctly, I think Pentax asked their community what they want to see and one of the options was a monochrome camera and then the community voted for a monochrome camera so Pentax just made one I think we have to answer some questions here first why am I reviewing a Pentax camera on my channel because this is a first uh, but it actually is perfectly fitting my background and then uh, secondly let's find out if a monochrome sensor is actually something that makes a difference in, in the output of your work. Yeah, I watched a lot of, uh, you know, Leica Q2 monochrome, M10 monochrome videos, and I was always interested in them, but I could never get my hands on them. And no one really showed me the difference in tones, and everyone is always talking about sharpness, low light quality, which is definitely a plus. It's much better here than on a color sensor. But I want to know, how does the end result look like? Because to me, I shoot a lot of color and monochrome, and I'm quite happy with my monochrome files that I get from my color sensor cameras. And that's why in this video, I'm not going to focus too much on the camera because you can watch reviews out there because it is, it is a Pentax K3 Mark III, but it just has a different sensor. And my mission in this video is to find out how the images actually feel like to me. Uh, and then I will talk a little bit about the camera as well, but it will be focusing more on the output, the image quality, how it feels emotionally, you know, philosophically but the main reason why I have this camera in the first place is actually because Rico Imaging asked me to take some photos for their product launch to use it for promotional purposes so I'm focused on getting interesting photos at the moment not so much on making a YouTube review but of course I gotta talk about it on my channel as well so I will be focusing on getting photos and I will show you some behind the scenes and hopefully I will get a, at least one master shot all right, I'm going to take some photos here in the countryside and do some street photography later and enjoy whatever this video turns out to be. Let's go. <laughs> Okay, so it's the first day out testing the K3 uh, Mark III Mono. I'm just going to call it the Pentax Mono, maybe. It's too complicated. So yeah, I've been shooting for half an hour so far. And it's, it's raining, that's great. And I think my, my project or my series will all be about the weather. Uh, Hamburg is known for having lots of uh, rain. And sometimes the sun comes uh, through and that always looks great in black and white. And because I'm not really allowed to take photos of people, of faces, um, I have to focus on uh, shapes, forms, uh, tones, and uh, light and shadow and all that stuff. But I'm enjoying it so far. And the camera got totally wet, but no problem. The lens is a little bit big. I wish I would have a small pancake lens instead, but it's weather sealed and it's it's fun so all right enjoy my first day out taking pictures in monochrome update uh, i'm on the other side of the elbe river never been here to this side uh, this is where our musical is and they have these frames where you can uh, photograph yourself for social media and I framed the Elf Philharmonic this building here in in the in the frame so frame within the frame and then people would constantly take photos uh, in front of me and uh, then there were two people like getting really upset about me taking photos 
I didn't even look at them, you know, but I was pointing the camera towards them so I can understand, but I was reminded how sensitive people are here in Germany when you take photos, even in public spaces. So be careful if you come to Germany, because you will get that a lot. So a few days passed, it's afternoon and my son uh, is sleeping in my car and I'm going to use this time and this opportunity uh, to shoot some close-ups of the camera and also the regular Pentax K3 Mark III. And I'm going to use the footage uh, for the next section where I will compare these two cameras. So in the beginning I told you that I won't talk too much about the camera itself but let's have a quick look and see the changes compared to the regular Pentax K3 Mark III. Uh, I happen to have one here, thanks to Wolfgang, shout out. And one thing you will notice immediately is that the lettering is blacked out. You can see that the Pentax logo here is uh, gray, really dark gray. Same goes for all the buttons and icons, they're all completely uh, dark gray. And I really like this look, it looks very stealthy. It makes the Pentax camera look kind of cool, to be honest. Because if I look at the regular Pentax uh, DSLRs, I find them too colorful sometimes. You know, you have green here, red, there's another green button here, we have some blue uh, markings here. There's a lot going on in terms of uh, colors on the camera body itself. So I like that the K3 uh, Mark III Mono is uh, just muted. It also uh, does say monochrome here on the top of the screen, which is kind of cool. And then the letters here for shake reduction, which is Pentax uh, in body stabilization, uh, it's also silver, not gold. You know, on the regular models, I don't see, I don't know if you can see it, but it is always gold. And here it is white or silver. So yeah, a very cool looking, uh, industrial looking camera, I would say. And in terms of feel and haptic, having experienced Pentax DSLRs in my early days, and you know, they are uh, very comfortable, I have to say. And the grip is a little bit smaller compared to my uh, Nikon DSLR, but I would say equally comfortable. Maybe even, no, no, it's not more comfortable, but it is very comfortable. And if you're coming from a mirrorless camera, then uh, I think you will appreciate uh, the ergonomics on this camera. And I also have to highlight how nice the front and back wheel uh, feel like. They have, you know, a very nice clicking sound. Maybe they're a tiny bit too uh, loose, too easy to, to change the settings. But when you hold the K3, um, your index finger and your thumb are uh, automatically touching the, the wheels. I really like to play with the wheels when I'm bored on the street. Um, it's very satisfying. And quick word on the viewfinder, um, very nice and bright. Uh, not as big as my uh, D850's viewfinder, but that's a full frame camera. But I would say um, the K3 has a viewfinder almost equal to a full frame uh, DSLR viewfinder. Yeah, I don't think you will be disappointed by uh, this viewfinder. This is so nostalgic to me because basically this setup here, APS-C uh, DSLR with this lens, is th this was my first professional uh, camera setup. Back when I was a student, I couldn't afford autofocus lenses, so I, I sold my the kit lens and bought um, this lens for 15 euros, I think, on eBay, which is nothing, right? And I shot portraits uh, with this, I shot uh, travel photography, and later I bought a 135 mini focus lens and I used that for taking photos of uh, theater productions. So many focusing uh, in the dark on, on, on a viewfinder that is not optimized for many focusing, but I made it work. And then much later I bought a Pentax uh, 12 to 24 wide angle zoom. And that became my main lens for documentary reportage. But I kept this lens up to today because uh, later I moved on to Canon and I was still using this adapted to the Canon. And now I even use it on my Fuji, adapted onto my Fuji for video sometimes. And it's crazy sharp. That's just one of the benefits of the Pentax system. You can use all these old lenses 
And I remember when I bought my, it was the Pentax K100D. That was my first uh, DSLR. And that was a six megapixel camera. And back then it was the first, or Pentax was the only brand who offered uh, IBIS in camera stabilization, which was great because then you can use these old lenses in, in, in low light. So Pentax always offered the best price to value uh, ratio. So yeah, very nostalgic to me. I don't know, it really feels like I'm, I'm using an old friend. <laughs> All right, another day, it is Sunday. And this is probably going to be my, my last day of doing street photography on the K, the Pentax Mono. So the pressure is on and today it's very sunny and I don't really like um, harsh midday sun. I prefer flat light or uh, light that com comes from a lower angle. So this is uh, challenging in all kinds of ways to me, but yeah. Uh, let's hope I can get some pictures today because the other photographers already submitted their work and I'm a little bit behind. So I guess the challenge will be to see in black or white here because everything is so colorful. Um, but the more I use this camera, the more I'm, my eyes see in black and white. So it should not be a problem. I just had a lunch break and something bad happened which ruined my mood. Uh, my wife sent me a message and uh, she told me that um, Ryuichi Sakamoto, the Japanese composer, he died or it was confirmed today and he is my absolute uh, favorite artist in general. I, I look up to him so much. He was such a great person and he, he really shaped how my taste for music he was such a hard worker, a huge inspiration. So it hit me kind of hard and I was eating lunch and listening to his music and getting a little teary and uh, the waiter was like, what is going on with this guy? Because I was, uh, because my nose was running. <laughs> yeah, I wish I could play some music of his while showing you the next images because they are go definitely going to be influenced by my mood. I might listen to all his greatest hits soundtracks and uh, definitely check him out if you have never heard of him um, he was such a pioneer when it comes to elect uh, electronic music and all his soundtracks the revenant was one of his latest soundtracks um, a big loss for us but he will be remembered and um, man how am i going to take pictures now and i will be going back to the fun fair which makes it even weirder but uh, yeah, let's see how my next images are going to turn out.
So, it is time to talk about my experience using the K3 Mark III monochrome. I had it for around uh, three weeks and in two days it has to go to the next uh, person to review it. And yeah, I want to share my, my thoughts, my insights, my opinion on this camera um, and talking about uh, the monochrome sensor in general. Uh, I had a lot of fun. It was a great experience. I learned a lot. Hopefully you learned a lot as well. So in the beginning I told you that my main mission is not this YouTube video but uh, to collect images for the for the camera's launch and I just sent my images to Pentax or Rico Imaging and uh, they're happy with it. I'm happy with it. Uh, I will show you my best offs. This is my personal selection. I think that uh, they reflect my, my shooting style and, and also give a good impression of how a monochrome sensor should be used. And yeah, I didn't do a series about the weather, um, but at the end it was more important to get some interesting uh, photographs. So I just captured whatever I can uh, see. So I achieved my goal number one. Now what was my goal number two? My second goal was to find out if a monochrome sensor does change the way my images look like. And we will talk about the shooting experience as well, because that is a huge part of it. But what about the final result? Do my images look better because I shot them on a monochrome sensor? I mean, you will be the judge, you saw this video already. Based on my comparison I did between the monochrome uh, K3 and the color sensor, I wouldn't say that the color sensor looks that much worse uh, in comparison to the monochrome sensor. There's definitely a sharpness and detail advantage on the monochrome sensor and less uh, noise, especially when you raise the shadows. You can do that a lot on the monochrome sensor. And when you shoot a lot at night, then yeah, the monochrome sensor will give you cleaner images. But there are some benefits that the color sensors have that the monochrome sensor doesn't have. And that is uh, highlights don't blow out easily. With the monochrome sensor, you have to be more careful. And that's why I was always using the highlight uh, weighted metering on this camera. So I didn't need to worry about my exposure because my images were always underexposed a little bit to protect the highlights. And that brings me to a very interesting insight uh, that this camera gave me. And that is that uh, the optical viewfinder is actually perfect for a monochrome sensor. Because if you use an electronic viewfinder or the LCD screen on the camera, which you can also do here, of course, then you get a preview of your black and white image, which can be helpful if you have difficulties um, visualizing your black and white uh, frame. But the downside is that you always see in black and white, even if you don't want to, because as I said, with a monochrome sensor, you have to underexpose a lot. So by using an EVF or an LCD screen, you will miss out on a lot of details in the shadows because you just can't see it. And I do a lot of uh, street photography or documentary style photography where I often wait for the right moment. So an optical viewfinder allows me to focus on my scene. And then later I know that my camera exposed for the highlights. So I imagine like cameras like the Q2 Monochrome, for example, I'm pretty sure it can be frustrating sometimes. I don't know if some Q2 monochrome viewers are watching. Maybe you can clarify in the comments, but I think the best way to experience a monochrome sensor is by using an optical viewfinder. Another camera that would be uh, suitable for a monochrome sensor would be something like uh, an X-Pro camera, right? I happen to have one here. This is a story for another time. Oh, what's that you have there? X-Pro 2 Graphite Edition? Well, I got... So that was a huge revelation to me. And it made the shooting experience that much more fun because I wasn't thinking yeah, about my image. My and whenever I was looking back at my LCD <laughs> screen to check my images, it almost had that feeling that I uh, get when I scan my HP5 uh, negatives. And when I see my images for the first time, that's the feeling I get with this camera. I'm not saying this camera shoots like film, but the experience is quite similar in that uh, regard. And also never questioned uh, why I was shooting black and white. I never missed color. Whenever I shoot black and white on my color sensor cameras, uh, because I can quickly change my uh, image preview to color, I sometimes want to see it in color. But here I can't do that, so I don't think about it. So I guess the main selling point of a monochrome sensor is that whole experience, not so much the final image. Because if I'm honest, I don't see a big enough difference between a color sensor uh, photograph converted to black and white compared to a monochrome sensor uh, image. From an image quality perspective, uh, I would say the only thing is uh, low light performance. The rest is very minute. 
And uh, last thing I want to say is, uh, of course, I would like to see this sensor making its way into a Ricoh GR. Mm -hmm. It would make sense, you know, APS-C, APS-C, same uh, company or brand. That would be cool. But as I said, I think a monochrome sensor has to be experienced with an optical viewfinder. So I'm not sure if I really want a monochrome GR anymore. It would be great to have just for the low light cap capabilities, but... You know, I didn't even mention the other benefits of a color sensor. You know, you can change the color channels, so you can make the, the sky darker or skin tones brighter. And on this camera, you have to use uh, filters like we did back in the old days, you know. And that is it. This is my experience using a monochrome sensor. And the first time using a Pentax again after a long time. What can I say? I appreciate that they are still making DSLRs because I love optical viewfinders. And from a build quality perspective, uh, these cameras are hard to beat. So yeah, I will include uh, any links that I can get my hands on in the description. So you can do some research if you want. And uh, thanks Rico Imaging for letting me try it. Uh, yeah, and have a look out for my images. I don't know exactly where they're going to use it, but I was told uh, they will use it in camera stores. So if you see my images, uh, send me a snap on Instagram. That would be great. And thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Let's do one last uh, shutter ASMR thing. <laughs> okay. See you next time.